Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. Learning to carry a conversation is vital to mastery of any language. Even beginners can quickly learn conversational language well enough to carry on real conversations with native speakers. Of course, beginners won't be able to carry a conversation the same way they could in their native language. But just knowing a few tips, like which questions to ask to keep a conversation going, are all you need to speak and interact with real native speakers. Before we get to specific suggestions, let's first take a closer look at how having real conversations in your target language is so vital to your mastery of the language. Communicating with other people is the very point of language, and conversation comes easily in our native tongue. For beginners, or anyone learning a new language, conversations aren't easy at all, and even simple greetings can be intimidating and awkward. Nothing kills a conversation faster than long periods of awkward silence, so you need practice and specific strategies to avoid them. When you know what to say to keep a conversation going, communication becomes much easier, and you make a better impression on your listener. Nothing will help you learn to speak a language faster and truly master the language than having real conversations with native speakers. Conversations quickly expose you to slang, cultural expressions, and vocabulary that force you to absorb and assimilate information faster than any educational setting. And that's a great thing. But how can you possibly have real conversations with real people if you're just starting out? Here are three proven methods that even beginners can quickly use to learn conversational language to make a great impression and avoid awkward silences. First, ask questions to keep a conversation going. For beginners and even more advanced speakers, the key is to ask questions to keep a conversation going. Of course, they can't be just random questions or else you may confuse the listener. But by memorizing a few key questions and the appropriate time to use them, you can easily carry a conversation with minimal vocabulary or experience. And remember, the more conversations you have, the quicker you will learn and master the language. Second, learn core vocabulary terms as quickly as possible. You don't need to memorize thousands of words to learn conversational language. In fact, with just a couple hundred words, you could have a very basic conversation. And by learning maybe 1,000 to 2,000 words, you could carry a conversation with a native speaker about current events, order in restaurants, and even get directions. To help you get started with this, check out our 2,000 common words, also known as our core list. These 2,000 words are all you need to learn to speak fluently and carry a conversation with a native speaker. Third, study video or audio lessons that you can play and replay again and again. If you want to know how to carry on a conversation, then you need exposure to native speakers, and the more, the better. Studying video or audio lessons is ideal because they provide contextualized learning in your native language, and you can play them again and again until you achieve mastery. Our instructors have created more than 2,500 video and audio lessons that you can play over and over. And the best part is, they don't just teach you vocabulary and grammar. They are designed to help you learn to speak and teach you practical everyday topics like shopping, ordering, and more. Although it may seem intimidating for a beginner, the truth is that it's very easy to learn conversational language. Just learn a few core vocabulary terms and which questions to ask to keep a conversation going. Our language learning program has the world's largest online collection of video and audio lessons by real instructors, plus tons of advanced tools to help you learn to speak and carry on a conversation quickly. Just a little practice and exposure to real conversations or lessons is all it really takes. So, if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. 10 lines you need for introducing yourself. So let's go. Hello, it's nice to meet you. Hello, it's nice to meet you. You can only use this the first time that you meet someone. If you say this to somebody after you have met them already, you're going to seem either A, like you've completely forgotten meeting them, or B, like you are a very strange person for saying it's nice to meet you again. So when you use this the first time, you can shake hands with someone and say, hello, it's nice to meet you.
my name is. The next phrase is, my name is blah, blah, blah. In my case, my name is Alicia. You can use this again when you're introducing yourself, or if you need to reintroduce yourself, you can use this pattern. When you meet somebody at a party, for example, you can say, my name is blah, blah, blah. My name is Barbara. My name is Stevens. You can shorten this. You can say, my names. My name's blah, blah, blah. I'm from after you've said your name, after you've shaken hands, you can say, I'm from the US, I'm from Japan, I'm from Turkey, I'm from your mom's house, I'm from, <laughs> I'm from a cave in Southern Europe, I'm from your country, or I'm from your city. I'm from the future. Wow, wow. <laughs> I have to go. I live in, I live in blah, blah, blah. You can use your city. Uh, you can use your country, you can use, even maybe if you live near a certain station, you can use the name of the station uh, where you live. So for example, I live in America is fine. I live in Los Angeles is fine. I live in New York is fine. Uh, so your neighborhood is fine. If someone says, where do you live? And you say, I live in an apartment. It's like, hmm? <laughs> what? Uh, so please use your, the region or the location where you live, not the type of place where you live. I'm a if you hear the question, what do you do? It, it's asking about your job. In English, people don't say, what is your job? That's not the question that we ask. Instead, the question is, what do you do? And the correct response to that is, I'm a, or I'm an, blah, 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 followed by your job title. So if someone says, what do you do? You can say, I'm a teacher. What do you do? I'm an engineer. What do you do? I'm a donut shop tester. I'm years old. When someone asks, how old are you? You can say, I'm blah, 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 years old. Don't forget the S at the end of this. If you like, you can shorten this phrase to just I'm plus your age. So I'm 65. <laughs> I'm 13. Whatever. I'm this many. Sometimes children will say that. How old are you? They'll say, I'm this many kind of cute. First time you meet someone, you might not ask how old are you. If it's in a friendly case, like a, in a party after you've spoken to the person a little bit, it's okay. Um, but just try to be sensitive to the context. Try to be sensitive to the people around you. And if you sense that maybe there's a very large age gap between you, it might be better just not to ask the question at all. I enjoy. Many of my students say, what is your hobby? Um, but that's not something that native speakers will say. No native speakers say, what is your hobby? Instead, we ask, uh, what do you like to do? Or what do you do in your free time? This is a much more natural question than what's your hobby? The answer to this then is I enjoy or I like plus a noun phrase. So for example, what do you like to do? I like listening to music or I enjoy listening to music. What do you do in your free time? I like watching movies. What do you do in your free time? I like baking cakes. What do you do in your free time? I enjoy tap dancing. What do you do in your free time? I enjoy making new friends. Aww. One of my hobbies is one of my hobbies is blah blah blah. With this one it's probably better to use a short easily or easy to understand hobby. If you're explaining a hobby, people are going to expect that it's going to be something that they know about, like photography or cooking or dancing or swimming or whatever. So try to pick something that will allow you to, to co continue the conversation. That's why movies or cooking or books or, you know, sports are a good thing to share. One of my hobbies is snowboarding. I've been learning English for if you are learning English, if you're studying English, you can use this expression. If someone asks you, how long have you been studying English? You can say, I've been studying English for amount of time. Or I've been learning English, or I've been practicing English, or I've been speaking English for a certain amount of time. I've been studying English since elementary school is also okay to use. Uh, I've been studying English since I was in college. Just be careful. For is used for a length of time, and since is used for a specific point in time at which you started something. So you can try and mix it up and use a few different uh, expressions there. So I've been learning English for a long time. I'm still learning English. <laughs> you should do that too. Okay. I'm learning English at EnglishClass101.com. This probably could be used in response to where did you learn English or where are you studying English or how are you studying English. You can respond with, I'm learning English at EnglishClass101.com or I'm learning English at 
uh, my school. I'm learning English at uh, my private teacher's house, for example. So a little bit of grammar in this sentence. Why do we use the progressive tense, I'm learning English? If you say, I'm learning, it sounds like you're still continuing your studies. If you say, I learned English at EnglishClass101.com, it sounds like you're finished. Uh, like you, you're finished studying, there's nothing else for you to study, uh, so you're done. Um, so it's, it's much, much more natural to actually use the progressive I'm learning or I'm studying uh, when you're talking about your studies, when you're talking about your hobbies, um, than it is to say I learned or I studied. 10 ways to say hello in English. Good morning. Good morning is the first thing you say to someone when you see them in the morning. Good morning, sir. Would you like a cup of coffee? Good morning. Could I please get some orange juice? Good morning. I'm still tired from the night before. Hello. Hello is the most common greeting you'll hear. That and hi. Hello is a polite, nice way to greet someone when you see them. Hello. Everyone says it. You cannot go wrong saying hello. Hello can be used at any time of the day, no matter whether it's morning or at night or at 4 a.m. When you see someone, you can say hello and it will still be appropriate. Long time no see. Long time no see. It's not necessarily grammatically correct, but it's a saying that we have. Hey, long time no see. What it means is that you haven't seen that person in a long time. So it literally means long time no see. Long time no see is something you say to someone when you haven't seen them in a while. Hey, John, long time no see. How are the wife and kids? How have you been? Hey, how have you been? I haven't seen you in a long time. How have you been? is asking someone how they're doing and how they've been for the past however long if you haven't seen them in a while. You might say, hey, long time no see, how have you been? How have you been? That's past tense. It implies that you haven't seen them in a while and you want to hear about how they are and how they've been for all of that time that you haven't seen them. Hey, long time no see, how have you been? How are you? How are you? Means how are you doing? How are you feeling? How is everything? It's a standard thing that you might say to anyone, even if you've seen them the day before. You might see them today and say, hey, how are you? How's it going? Hey, how's it going? How's it going is a more informal way to say, how are you? So how are you and how's it going they mean the same thing. It's asking how you are doing, how you are feeling. Is everything okay with you? What's up? What's up is another way of saying, hey, how is it going? But this one is even more informal. So you might say this to friends, hey, what's up? And they'll say, nothing, just living my life, you know, day in and day out. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? Would you like some lunch? Good afternoon is a polite way to greet someone in the afternoon. So if you run into your boss, you might say, good afternoon. It's very nice. It's polite. Not a lot of people say it to their friends, but it's, it's a polite way to greet someone. Good evening. Good evening is a nice way to greet someone in the evening time. You can only use this phrase in the evening because it's wishing someone a good evening. It's saying hello at a certain time of day. Good evening. Would you like some dinner? Good evening. Have you eaten yet? All of my examples involve food, it seems. It's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you. This is something that's very common to say the first time that you meet someone. You might shake their hand and say, hi, it's nice to meet you. My name is Bridget. My name is... It's telling that person that you are happy to be meeting them. It's a pleasure to meet them. Hi, it's nice to meet you. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to ask what someone's hobbies are 
without using the word hobbies. You've probably seen the question, do you have any hobbies? Or, what are your hobbies? in an English textbook before. However, native English speakers almost never use the word hobbies when asking about them. A much more natural way to ask the same question is, what do you do for fun? Let's practice this question. What do you do for fun? What do you do for fun? You can also ask, what do you do in your free time? What do you do in your free time? So, how would you answer this question? Let's look at how native speakers would do it. The easiest way is to say, I like to, or just, I like, followed by what you like to do. For example, if you like watching movies, you could say, I like to watch movies, or I like watching movies. I like to watch movies, or I like watching movies. And if you like golf, you could say, I like to play golf, or I like playing golf. I like to play golf, or I like playing golf. You can emphasize how much you like your hobby by adding a word like really in front of like. For example, I really like watching movies. On the other hand, if you want to play down how much you like something, you can say kind of. For example, I kind of like playing tennis. Now it's time for Alicia's advice. If you don't have any special hobbies or don't want to be specific, a good way to reply is, I like hanging out with my friends and stuff like that. I like hanging out with my friends and stuff like that. Just use I like and add hanging out with my friends and then add and stuff like that. In this lesson, you're going to learn new, more common ways to ask and answer the question, how are you, in English. You've probably learned, how are you, and I'm fine, in textbooks before, but in the United States, people will usually ask this question and answer it in a different way. First, let's review. If someone says, how are you? You can say, I'm fine. I'm fine. Here are some other ways to answer. Pretty good. This means about the same thing as, I'm fine. Pretty good. We also have, not bad. You can use this if you are feeling just okay or so-so. Not bad. Let's look at our question again. How are you? This is the most well-known way of asking how someone is. You could use it when you want to be polite. But now, let's look at some different ways to ask how someone is. These ways are more casual and much more common. First, Hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? You can answer this in many ways. If you're feeling good, you can say, good. Good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Not bad. Not bad. Once more, good. Pretty good. Not bad. Here's a tip. Even though these answers mean the same thing as, I'm fine, you can't answer, how's it going, with, I'm fine. It will sound a bit strange. If you're not feeling good, you can say, not so good, not so good, not great, not great, or not so well, not so well. Be careful. If you say one of these, the other person will usually ask, why, what's wrong, to be polite. Then you will have to explain. Another casual but very common version of how are you is what's up, what's up. To reply, use a cheerful voice as you say, not much, not much, or nothing much, nothing much. This means you're free and able to chat. 
Since what's up is just another way of saying hello, you can also reply with hey or hi. Now it's time for Alicia's advice. A lot of the time, when we ask questions that mean how are you in English, we're not actually asking about the other person's health, we're only asking to be polite. You should think of these questions as another way of saying hello, a way for the conversation to get started, instead of actual, literal questions. In fact, when someone asks you, what's up, you don't even have to answer. Just say, what's up, in reply. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to ask what someone's job is in natural English. Of course, you can just say, what is your job? This is correct English, but it sounds too direct and awkward. Native English speakers almost never say this in a social situation. Instead, they use a different question. But before we master that, we need to compare it to a very similar question. What are you doing? I'm presenting a video about English. What do you do? I'm an English teacher. Do you see the difference? These two questions, what are you doing and what do you do, sound similar but mean different things. The first one is asking what you are doing right now, this minute. You answer it using an ing verb. What are you doing? I'm reading. I'm watching TV. While the second is actually a shortened version of what do you do for a living? This is how we ask what is your job in natural English? Let's practice this question. What do you do? What do you do? When native speakers of English ask this question, it can come out very fast and sound more like, what do you do? In order to tell it apart from, what are you doing? Just listen for the ing sound on the end of the question. If it's not there, then you're being asked what your job is. So, how would you answer this question? Just think of it as if the other person is asking you, what is your job? You could answer with, I am, plus your job. I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher. Or, I'm an engineer. If you want to learn more job names, go to EnglishClass101.com and check out the core word lists. These cover job vocabulary and more, and include a picture and audio to help you perfect your pronunciation. You can also mention the place that you work at, starting with, I work at. I work at a hospital. I work at a hospital. I work at a law firm. I work at a law firm. If you work for a big company that is well known, you can say, I work for, and then the name. I work for Microsoft. I work for Microsoft. I work for the New York Times. I work for the New York Times. Now it's time for Alicia's advice. When you ask the question, what do you do? And the other person tells you their job, it's polite to make some kind of positive comment about his or her job. For example, how interesting, or that must be exciting, or even, oh, really? Remember to sound sincere. 10 different phrases that you can use to respond to the question, how are you? So let's go. I'm great. The first phrase is, I'm great. If someone says, how are you? You can say, I'm great. Try to say, I'm great with a kind of an, an upbeat voice. Um, so something like, how are you? I'm great. I'm feeling bad. I'm feeling bad. If you say, I'm feeling bad, the other person is probably, if they're a friend of yours or a coworker, going to ask you why, what happened. So if you want to use, I'm feeling bad, make sure you have an explanation ready. Anyway, somebody says, how are you? And you go, I'm feeling bad. Maybe I went out for drinks last night with my coworkers. Oops. I'm okay. I'm okay. I feel like this is one of those intonation practice ones. I'm okay with that, ah, I'm okay. It's like sort of upward intonation. You're like, cool. But if, if someone says, how are you? And you're like, I'm okay. <laughs> They're like, oh no. What happened? So you can use your intonation with I'm okay to make it a good thing or a not so good thing. 
but either way, it's not like a very like super serious response. Thank you for asking. Yeah, <laughs> I imagine this would be in a more formal situation. Like if my friend said to me, how are you? And I was like, thank you for asking. They'd be like, what? I would say I'm fine or I'm doing well, I'm doing great, plus thank you for asking. So I have to say, how are you? Oh, I'm doing very well, thank you. Mm. Oh, that's how I would use it. And you? The next one is and you. Like the least natural response to how are you is I'm fine, thank you, and you. Like just get out of, put it, just take it out of your head. Nobody says that. I always say how about you. That's a much more natural thing. How are you? How are you? How are you can be a response, again, after you have given your answer to the question, how are you? I'm great. How are you? How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? How have you been recently? How have you been recently? This is only useful if you haven't seen the other person for a while. I'm not bad. I'm not bad. I'm not bad. How are you? I'm not bad. No, I'm not bad. Hmm. Things could be worse. <laughs> I would probably do this. I'm sleepy. The next expression is I'm sleepy. Hey, it's like so specific. If someone said, how are you? I would probably say, I'm okay, but I'm a little sleepy. I don't know that I would just say I'm sleepy unless it's a really good friend of mine. It's a person close to you. You can say, oh, I'm so tired. I'm, I would say I'm super tired or I'm really tired. Uh, and I feel like that's a little bit more natural than just, I'm sleepy. I'm good. One that I use a lot, if someone says, how are you? I say, I'm good. Uh, that's just probably my go-to response. Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Maybe I'll repeat it while smiling. I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, thanks for asking, great. Uh -huh. How are you? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. A man and a woman are talking. How old is the man now? Your birthday is really soon, isn't it? Yep, it's the day after tomorrow. How old are you going to be? I'm turning 60. Congratulations, we should celebrate. Thank you very much, it's kind of you to say. How old is the man now? A man and a woman are talking. How old is the man now? Your birthday is really soon, isn't it? Yep, it's the day after tomorrow. How old are you going to be? I'm turning 60. Congratulations, we should celebrate. Thank you very much, it's kind of you to say. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. A man and a woman are talking. Who lives with the man? I'd like to introduce you to my family. Is there some time soon you could come over? Wow, this is a big step. Could you tell me a bit more about your family before I meet them? Sure. My father works in computers and his hobby is fishing. My mother runs a restaurant and she's good at cooking. They live nearby. Do you have any brothers and sisters? Yes, I have an older sister and a younger brother. My sister is married and is living abroad. My brother is in law school over on the East Coast. It sounds like you have a nice family. I'd love to meet them. Who lives with the man? A man and a woman are talking. Who lives with the man? I'd like to introduce you to my family. Is there some time soon you could come over? Wow, this is a big step. Could you tell me a bit more about your family before I meet them? Sure. My father works in computers and his hobby is fishing. My mother runs a restaurant and she's good at cooking. They live nearby. Do you have any brothers and sisters? Yes, I have an older sister and a younger brother. My sister is married and is living abroad. My brother is in law school over on the East Coast. It sounds like you have a nice family. 
I'd love to meet them. Hi, everybody. My name is Alicia, and welcome back to Top Words. Today's topic is 10 lines you need for introducing yourself. So let's go. Hello, it's nice to meet you. Hello, it's nice to meet you. You can only use this the first time that you meet someone. If you say this to somebody after you have met them already, you're going to seem either A, like you've completely forgotten meeting them, or B, like you are a very strange person for saying it's nice to meet you again. So when you use this the first time, you can shake hands with someone and say, hello, it's nice to meet you. My name is... The next phrase is, my name is... Blah, blah, blah. In my case, my name is Alicia. You can use this again when you're introducing yourself, or if you need to reintroduce yourself, you can use this pattern. When you meet somebody at a party, for example, you can say, my name is blah, blah, blah. My name is Barbara. My name is Stevens. You can shorten this. You can say, my names. My name's blah, blah, blah. I'm from after you've said your name, after you've shaken hands, you can say, I'm from the US, I'm from Japan, I'm from Turkey, I'm from your mom's house, I'm from, <laughs> I'm from a cave in southern Europe, I'm from your country, or I'm from your city. I'm from the future! Wow. Wow. <laughs> I have to go! I live in, I live in, blah blah blah. You can use your city. Uh, you can use your country, you can use, even maybe if you live near a certain station, you can use the name of the station uh, where you live. So, for example, I live in America is fine. I live in Los Angeles is fine. I live in New York is fine. Uh, so your neighborhood is fine. If someone says, where do you live? And you say, I live in an apartment. It's like, hmm? <laughs> what? Uh, so please use your, the region or the location where you live, not the type of place where you live. I'm a... If you hear the question, what do you do? It, it's asking about your job. In English, people don't say, what is your job? That's not the question that we ask. Instead, the question is, what do you do? And the correct response to that is, I'm a, or I'm an, blah, 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 followed by your job title. So if someone says, what do you do? You can say, I'm a teacher. What do you do? I'm an engineer. What do you do? I'm a donut shop tester. I'm years old. When someone asks, how old are you? You can say, I'm blah, 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 years old. Don't forget the S at the end of this. If you like, you can shorten this phrase to just I'm plus your age. So I'm 65. <laughs> I'm 13. Whatever. I'm this many. Sometimes children will say that. How old are you? They'll say, I'm this many. It's kind of cute. First time you meet someone, you might not ask how old are you. If it's in a friendly case, like a, in a party after you've spoken to the person a little bit, it's okay. Um, but just try to be sensitive to the context. Try to be sensitive to the people around you. And if you sense that maybe there's a very large age gap between you, it might be better just not to ask the question at all. I enjoy. Many of my students say, what is your hobby? Um, but that's not something that native speakers will say. No native speakers say, what is your hobby? Instead, we ask, uh, what do you like to do? Or what do you do in your free time? This is a much more natural question than what's your hobby? The answer to this then is I enjoy or I like plus a noun phrase. So for example, what do you like to do? I like listening to music or I enjoy listening to music. What do you do in your free time? I like watching movies. What do you do in your free time? I like baking cakes. What do you do in your free time? I enjoy tap dancing. What do you do in your free time? I enjoy making new friends. Aww. One of my hobbies is one of my hobbies is blah blah blah. With this one it's probably better to use a short easily or easy to understand hobby. If you're explaining a hobby, people are going to expect that it's going to be something that they know about, like photography or cooking or dancing or swimming or whatever. So try to pick something that will allow you to, to co continue the conversation. That's why movies or cooking or books or, you know, sports are a good thing to share. One of my hobbies is snowboarding. I've been learning English for if you are learning English, if you're studying English, you can use this expression. If someone asks you, how long have you been studying English? You can say, I've been studying English for amount of time. Or I've been learning English, or I've been practicing English, or I've been speaking English for a certain amount of time. I've been studying English since elementary school is also okay to use. Uh, I've been studying English since I was in college. Just be careful. 
for is used for a length of time and since is used for a specific point in time at which you started something. So you can try and mix it up and use a few different uh, expressions there. So I've been learning English for a long time. I'm still learning English. <laughs> you should do that too. Okay. I'm learning English at EnglishClass101.com. This probably could be used in response to where did you learn English or where are you studying English or how are you studying English? You can respond with, I'm learning English at EnglishClass101.com or I'm learning English at uh, my school. I'm learning English at uh, my private teacher's house, for example. So a little bit of grammar in this sentence. Why do we use the progressive tense, I'm learning English? If you say, I'm learning, it sounds like you're still continuing your studies. If you say, I learned English at EnglishClass101.com, it sounds like you're finished. Uh, like you, you're finished studying, there's nothing else for you to study, uh, so you're done. Um, so it's it's much, much more natural to actually use the progressive I'm learning or I'm studying uh, when you're talking about your studies, when you're talking about your hobbies, um, than it is to say I learned or I studied. End, 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 end. Uh, so those were 10 lines that you need to introduce yourself and to help give the other person a little bit of information and carry the conversation forward. So please try them, please go crazy with them, make them your own. Thanks very much for joining us for this episode of Top Words, and we'll see you again soon. Bye. I'm from your neighbor's doghouse. Fish. Glum, glum. Oh yes, I like to go spelunking in North Africa every summer. Welcome to EnglishClass101.com's English in Three Minutes, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn English. Hey everyone, I'm Alicia. In this series, we're going to learn some easy ways to ask and answer common questions in English. It's really useful, and it only takes three minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to ask a really basic question in a polite but natural way. How old are you? In your English textbook, one of the first lessons may have been how to ask someone's age by saying just, how old are you? However, in many English language cultures, asking an adult's age directly, particularly a woman's age, is not polite. If you suddenly ask, how old are you, to someone you've just met, they'll understand you, but they might not be too happy about answering such a blunt and direct question. So, how do you find out someone's age without offending them? You just add a magic phrase to the beginning of the question. This phrase is, do you mind me asking, this is an incredibly useful phrase that you should definitely memorize. It comes in handy whenever you want to ask a question that may be a little personal or come across as a little too direct. Native speakers of English use it all the time. So, the full question would be, Do you mind me asking how old you are? Be sure to pay attention to the word order of this sentence. Rather than, Do you mind me asking how old are you? It's do you mind me asking how old you are? The answer to this can be simple. I'm 25 years old. Or just, I'm 25. Or it can be a little more detailed. If you've just had a birthday, you can say, I've just turned 25. Or if you're about to have a birthday, you can say, I'll turn 25 this month. Or I'll turn 25 in July. It's more natural here not to give your exact birthday, like July the 9th, but just the month. So again, to turn this question back on the asker and find out his or her age, all you have to do is use that other magic phrase we introduced in previous lessons, how about you? Here, it's okay not to worry about being polite since the other person asked you the question first. Now it's time for Alicia's advice. We mentioned that asking someone's age might not be polite, but if you do decide to ask this question, here's another tip. Some people like to reply with another question. How old do you think I am? Be careful. If you say an age that's older than the person's true age, they might be very offended. So it's always safer to say a number lower than what you actually think. So if you think the person looks 40, say 35 and see how happy they look. See you next time. Hi everybody, welcome back to English Topics. My name is Alicia and I'm joined by... Davey. Hi Davey. So today our topic is going to be how to start a conversation in English. So both of us 
I've tried to prepare a few tips uh, that might help you as you try to start conversations uh, in your English language studies. So let's begin. Do you want to start first again? Oh, okay. I'll start. I can right, start I'll first. Start. Okay. I'll okay. Start. Go first. This, we're giving tips on how to start a conversation. Mm -hmm. I will start today. My first tip, very important. I'm trying to follow myself right now. Don't be shy. Very important tip. Uh, this isn't really so much a language learning tip. Well, it doesn't seem like a language learning tip, but I think it really is because whenever you communicate uh, in a second language or a foreign language, it can be really nerve wracking. It can make you very nervous and very anxious to try and do that, and especially if you're talking to someone for the first time. Uh, and so the first thing is just to remind yourself that it's not a big deal and to not be shy and be confident. And if you can maintain that attitude as you begin to talk to, t talk to someone, it will be much easier, mm -hmm. I think. I agree. I agree. Or Thank even, you. like you say, mm -hmm. even if you are shy, just pretend that you're not shy. That's a good tip. You know, it's like even if you can just pretend just for a few minutes just to start the conversation or to continue a conversation a little bit, it can be good, even if you feel shy. I agree. And you mm -hmm. might find, too, oftentimes people who would say that they are shy when they talk to someone in another language they can have a different personality it's mm -hmm. a chance to have a different personality in a different language mm -hmm. um, so if you tell yourself that too uh, when you speak english when you speak another language you're more confident than you are when you speak your own language yeah that's Maybe. true i've heard that before actually mm -hmm. people who say that they feel like they're more outgoing when they speak english if that's the case maybe that's good for you also, just in general, another point about um, maybe not only starting conversations, but continuing them. Um, we're comfortable, English language speakers are, with interruptions to some point. Like, you shouldn't always yeah, interrupt the other speaker. But they are pretty comfortable with it. See, he just mm -hmm. did it. So, we're, we're kind of, we're very comfortable with it. So, you don't need to wait for an invitation to speak in a conversation. You can just join in or maybe agree with the person who's speaking or disagree with the person who's speaking as a way to join a conversation that's already in progress. Yeah, nice one. That's a good one. Okay, I have? will share a tip. Mine are a little bit, I don't know. They're very dependent on maybe who you're talking to, uh, maybe what your relationship is. So let's say for this one, you are in a place where like a, I don't know, a restaurant or a bar or something, and you don't know the person you'd like to speak to, but mm. maybe, I don't know, there's someone attractive you'd like to speak to, or maybe you want to speak with the bartender, something. So uh, maybe, okay, maybe this is better if you're trying to speak to a fellow customer. So I have, it's, so, it's sort of small, make a simple comment about something happening in the surroundings. So this should be uh, one, a, a simple comment, uh, two, something that the other person can clearly see, and three, something that you can agree on easily. So, for example, if somebody uh, has just walked by the restaurant wearing like a crazy hat, I don't know, you could say like, oh, did you see that guy? Something like that. Something that it's easy to agree on to initiate the conversation. Or maybe, I don't know, there's a TV in the bar. Um, like, whoa, did you see that play? Or something that maybe you can identify that you maybe shared with the other person um, during the time you've been in that space together. So this should be a very simple comment. Don't make a weird comment here. Make it, make it very, very relaxed. Mm -hmm. uh, create a relaxed environment that the other person feels they can join in easily. Mm. That's a very good tip. I don't know. I'm trying to think of maybe a time that I used this. Or maybe I wanted to make a comment, like, and there was another person that happened to be there, and we had a moment where we agreed on something, right. but then the conversation didn't really continue. Yes. So it's kind of a good way to test and see if that other person wants to speak to you, too. Yes, yeah. Mm. That's a good point. And it makes me think, this isn't one of my tips. This is an ex a free tip. You're getting a free freebie <gasps> tip now. Is I think... Uh, tips everywhere. <laughs> they're, every they're flying around. <laughs> so is, many tips. Uh, to be, be patient, wait for your opening too, because mm -hmm. you might want to talk to this person next to you, but if you just butt in with a question out of nowhere, it might seem very strange. But if you wait and have, have a moment, wait for that guy with the funny hat to walk yeah. by, and then you have your opening, then you have an, a natural point mm -hmm. uh, that you can enter the, uh, a conversation with someone. Yeah, and uh, I think... So be patient. Totally. And going back to your point about not being shy, like don't 
be so focused on waiting for that moment that you just pick something really strange. Yes, yeah. <laughs> like if I like walked up to you, I don't know you in a bar, and was like, "Did you hear that noise?" <laughs> yes. <laughs> like that's a really strange, a strange question. question. Maybe he did hear that noise, but that's a really strange yeah. question、um, to introduce yourself. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs>、so. This actually all this all, this kind of relates too to my my second tip, which、okay. is very similar to 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 your tip、yeah. about、uh, making an a kind of comment. Was ask an indirect question, and I noticed a lot of the comments. Your your tip was to make a comment, but a lot of your comments, the examples you gave, are questions, right?、Mm, and importantly, I think that those questions should be kind of indirect questions. For example, if I'm standing at the bus stop and I want to start a conversation with someone else standing at the bus stop, let's say it's very very hot. But if I turn to that person and say, "Do you think it's hot?" <laughs> That's very strange. <laughs> but if I say something like, "Oh, it's." Pretty hot today, right? You know, that's a little bit more casual, a little bit more informal. Yeah.、Um, you, you don't want to scare people with these very direct questions.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's true. That's true. And and even even a question. That's a great example. <laughs> Do you think it's hot? Is a really weird question. Very strange question. <laughs> but but again. Keeping or giving people that opportunity to agree with you, like、yes. you're you're throwing a little opinion out there. It's hot, right? Oh yeah, it's hot. That's true. That's a really, really good one. I totally agree. Or and I, but I think for that exact same reason, I've had some people come up to me and they they try to begin a conversation with, "How are you?" And I'm like, <laughs> "No, that's that, yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a that's an introduction that you use for people that you already know. Yes. Um. So don't try to start a conversation with. How are you? It sounds too familiar, and it's a little confusing to yeah, the person. Strangers don't always want to tell you how they are. That's true. What if I'm bad? I don't want to tell you. <laughs> What if I feel bad that day? Yeah. So don't use "How are you" to introduce yourself. Nice one. Okay. Yeah. What do you have next? Um. Actually, okay. Maybe this is somewhat related to the one you just、um, mentioned. Okay. Um. I've got okay. This is maybe in a like a party or a social event situation. I have energetically introduce yourself and ask a question about where you are.、Um, mm. So this might be a little specific, but if you go to a social event where you're there to meet people and to speak to people, if you go up to someone and you just introduce yourself with a big smile and say. Hi, my name is Alicia. Have you ever been to one of these events before? Something like that can get the conversation started.、Um, but again, this is—I feel like it's a tip that's good in a place where、um, maybe everyone is there for a similar purpose. If you do that, like. On to use your example at the bus station, it's a little <laughs> bit weird. Or if you're if you're just in public, you pass someone on the street, it's a little strange to、yeah. just. Walk up and introduce someone energetically,、um, but if you're in a location where you have this chance,、um, there are a couple of nice little introductory questions you could use、um, for events. Like I don't, that's one that I would I've used. Like, hi, is this your first time、mm-hmm. here? Or、um, who do you know at this party? Yes, yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah, how did you find out about this event?、Yeah. That sort of thing. Also, similar kind of question in those situations is asking someone. For help or for information,、mm-hmm. because it lets that other person know that you're not a a scary or threatening person in that situation either. If you're asking for help, you know, oh, can you can you tell me where the kitchen is? I need to put this in the refrigerator, something like that. And then that that shows the other person that you're not you're not an expert on this. You're asking for their help, and that kind of gives people. Uh, an easy thing to engage you on,、mm-hmm. an easy thing to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. Asking for help can be a nice way too. Yeah, that's a good point. I think asking for help it also kind of puts you in a slightly vulnerable position. Absolutely, it makes you seem a little bit like, oh, I need help, so、mm-hmm. you know, please take care of me. It's a little bit interesting. So that's a good tip too, I think. Okay,、uh, I think we're on to number three for you. We are.、Uh, my last one is a very important one. This comes at the end, though. Is、uh, don't take it personally. If the person doesn't want to talk, a lot of times, if you try and start a conversation with a stranger, they don't always want to talk to you. People try and talk. Stranger tries to talk to me. I might be very busy. I might have had a bad day. I may not want to talk to them. That doesn't mean that they're a bad person or they can't speak English or anything like that.、Mm-hmm. So if you have that experience, you know, my first tip was don't be shy. You might be very nervous about starting a conversation with someone. And then you work up the courage. You go and you ask them a question, and they don't want to talk to you. That's okay. Don't take it personally.、Uh, it has nothing to do with you.、Um, 
you know, you can find someone else to talk to. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. And I think that's an especially important because especially depending on the culture that you're from, you might have heard like, oh, English speakers, particularly Americans, are so friendly or so outgoing. But, and, but you know, if a stranger tries to speak to me or to you, maybe we're going to ignore you on the street because we don't know who that person is. Or, you know, mm -hmm. maybe like you say, we've had a bad day or whatever it is. There are so many reasons not to want to talk to a person that you don't know. So mm -hmm. don't be offended. Don't be sad. Don't be discouraged. Mm -hmm. Don't don't think that, oh, my, my English is so bad. This person didn't want to talk to me. Don't think that. That it could be any any other reason why someone doesn't want to mm -hmm. talk to you. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. Nice tip. That's really important. Okay. Then we will move on maybe to my last one. Uh, okay. So for my last one, this is maybe uh, among people that you have some acquaintance with. So maybe uh, you're not super close to them, but you've seen them before. Uh, or maybe it's coworkers you're not super close to. But anyway, you'd like to make your relationship with those people deeper. You can share a story about something you did recently, something interesting, a small short story. Don't tell a long 10-minute story about... I don't know, going shopping for milk on the weekend. That's, that's boring. But something interesting that you did relatively recently that maybe they can find something of interest or something of value in. So maybe you found a new restaurant that was good. Maybe you went to a concert and that was exciting. Maybe you met someone interesting. So if there's something that you can share about yourself that the other person might find valuable, that's a good way um, to, to initiate conversation. Yeah. Mm, so. on, on that point, if I can add another another free tip. Oh my gosh. On on that note, it made me think. You spoke earlier about being vulnerable. Asking mm -hmm. uh, asking for help can show that you're vulnerable. Tell an embarrassing story. That's good too. Don't don't brag. Don't talk about this great new car that you bought. No one wants to hear that. Mm -hmm. Talk about how you you lost your car keys immediately after you bought your new car. Mm -hmm. Tell an embarrassing story. Tell something that will make the person laugh and will make you um, be vulnerable and, and look like a, a normal person. That's true. That's true. Like telling, uh, actually, that's a good strategy. It, it's called self-deprecation. Mm. So making, it means to make yourself look bad or to put yourself in a lower status, a lower position. And mm -hmm. it can be very effective for making friends and like making people laugh. Uh, I totally do this. It's it's actually a lot of fun when you think about it. Like a story about something bad happening is oftentimes more interesting than a story about something good happening. That's true. Mm. So all the best comedies are about terrible, terrible things happening. happening. <laughs> yeah. So if you have something like a little yeah, like you lost your car keys or you had some kind of funny episode where maybe you don't look like the hero of the story, that's a really good one to share. Have you had anything happen to you recently? Oh my gosh. I probably have. I lost my bag. I just came back from uh, traveling in Europe and my bag got lost between Dubai Airport and Tokyo Airport. Oh, no. And so my bag didn't uh, arrive. So I had to go two days without any of my clothes or anything. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when I finally got my bag, I was like, yay, I got it from the, I got it from the delivery guy. I was so happy. I opened it up and then like my sunscreen had exploded oh, inside no. my bag. I was like, <sighs> at least I have my objects. <laughs> like, I have my clothes and things. And so. they won't get sunburned. Exactly. Now I won't sunburn any of my clothes. So yeah. So, I mean, it's like a small, relatable, oh, that moped, <laughs> small, relatable story. Uh, that maybe yeah, someone else can identify like, oh, that happened to me one time. And then the conversation rolls from there. So nice tip. Nice tip. OK. Are you out of are you out of free tips? Are those all your free tips? That's, that's all for today. For conversation that's, that's, starters? That's all I get today. We can't continue this conversation. <laughs> that's a different subject. All right. Well, we'll finish there for today. Thanks very much for joining us for this episode of English Topics. Davey, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, if you liked this video, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel as well. Also, if you want to find more content like this, please make sure to check us out at EnglishClass101.com. If you have any ideas for how to start a conversation um, that you use, please make sure to leave it in a comment too so we can check it out. Thanks very much for watching this episode and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye. Hi everybody, my name is Alicia and today we're gonna to be talking about the top 25 English phrases. So let's get started.
The first phrase is hello. Hello, of course, is used as a greeting. You can greet your friends, you can greet your coworkers, your family with this phrase just by saying hello. Hey, hi, what's up? Hello, sup, yo. Pretty much any time of day you can use hello. Hello. The next phrase is good morning. Good morning is used as a greeting in the morning. You can kind of feel when morning ends for you. Good morning is nice and polite. Or even just morning with your close friends or close coworkers. The next phrase is good night. Good night is fine. We don't use this to greet other people. We use it when we're saying goodbye to other people at night. Uh, family members, particularly mothers and fathers, to say good night to their children before they put them to bed. You can say it to your friend in a text message or in an email if you've been talking for a while. Good night. So the next word to talk about is goodbye. Uh, use it when you say goodbye to your friends, when you leave your friends. Goodbye. Bye, of course. Take care. Have a nice day. Peace out. That's another way to say goodbye. Okay, the next phrase is I'm plus your name. Of course, this is a way to introduce yourself. You can use I'm, in my case, Alicia. I'm Alicia to introduce yourself in any situation. New friend, I'm Alicia. Okay, the next phrase is, what's your name? What's your name is used to ask someone else what their name is. So, what is your name sounds a bit, try to use what's your name. If you forget someone's name, you can say, sorry, what's your name? Or sorry, what's your name again? Next phrase is, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, anytime you meet someone new. Nice to meet you is fine. Good to meet you is a little more casual. Great to meet you sounds very excited. Pleasure to meet you sounds like uh, maybe a formal situation or a business context. Okay, the next phrase is, how are you? How are you? Is an, it's just a friendly way to check in with the other person. You can use it with friends, your family, your coworkers, maybe even your boss to a certain degree. Uh, how are ya? How you doing? The next phrase is, I'm fine, thanks. And you? Uh, if you saw English in three minutes, we talked a lot about this phrase. Uh, instead of, I'm fine, thank you, and you, say, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Just shorten it, make it a little bit more natural. How are you? Good. How are you? Great. How are you? Not so good. How are you? Okay. And so on. So when someone says, how are you? Offer, I usually say, I'm good. This week, I blah, blah, blah. Give some information about what you've been up to. Maybe a hobby, something that you did recently, an event, something interesting you saw, whatever. People want to make that connection with you and it's a good chance for you to continue speaking. The next word is please. Please is a polite phrase used when you want something from someone else. You can use this as a response when someone offers you something, like in a restaurant, for example. Would you like more water? Would you like something to drink? Oh, please. The next phrase is thank you. Thank you is used to express your appreciation. You can use thank you with everybody. The next phrase is you're welcome, you're welcome. When someone says thank you, you can say you're welcome. Ah, no biggie, I use no biggie as in no biggie is short for no big problem. The next word is yes. Yes, of course, yes means is any positive expression. Someone asks you a question and the answer is a positive answer. You say yes, yep, uh-huh, yeah. We. Oui. <laughs> no. Next, I'm guessing I know it. Yep. The next word is no. No is a negative response to something when you have to give a negative answer. So as you can probably guess, um, the long form of no is negative. I like to use nope. It's very, very casual. Not gonna happen. My parents would use that with me. To soften that a little bit, if you want to show a negative response to something, like let's go out for dinner tonight. What do you want to do? Like, do you want to go out? Mm, not really. Mm, no, I don't think so, mm, to soften it. The next word is okay, okay. This word comes from copy editors. Okay, when they had to check a manuscript, um, they had to label the manuscript all clear, A-C, but because they were copy editors and they have a very, very sick sense of humor, they thought they would mark it OK for all clear to make a joke because O and K do not start all and clear, but it caught on among everybody in the world. <laughs> Anyway, okay uh, is used to agree with somebody else. Well, it can be used actually to express a positive or kind of a slight negative, I feel. Transitioning in your conversation, you can say, okay, now we're going to talk about blah, blah, blah. Okay, the next phrase is excuse me. Excuse me, it's used to get someone's attention in English when you don't know the other person. For example, in a store, a supermarket, maybe a stranger on the street, you need to ask directions. You can use excuse me. You can use excuse me in the supermarket. Excuse me, can you tell me where the hot sauce is? If you've done something rude in public, you can use excuse me. I personally do not do rude things in public ever. <laughs> I'm sorry is the next word we're gonna talk about. I'm sorry is used to apologize when you have made a mistake 
or someone you know has made a mistake and you're connected to it, or you just feel bad, you can use, I'm sorry. You made a mistake at work, I'm sorry. You forgot to feed your cat, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. You bump someone next to you. Oh, sorry. What time is it is the next phrase when you need to check what time it is. What time is it? When you ask someone else what time it is, maybe you say this to yourself too. Check your watch, check your phone, check a clock. Pretty straightforward phrase. There aren't really any short versions, so. That's an easy one. <laughs> Where is the plus a location? So you can use this for um, a building or a store. We don't, we're not gonna use this where is the for a place, a city name or a state name or a country name. To do that, you would need to remove the. But where is the bank? Where is the post office? You can use this to ask directions, to ask for help in your house or at work. Where is the copy machine? Where is the file I need? Where is the blah, blah, blah? And where is the bathroom is perhaps a very important question to know. The next one is, may I use the restroom? May I use the restroom is a polite uh, and soft expression that you can use if you need to use the toilet, you need to use the washroom. And when you're at someone's house for the very first time, when you're in a place that you're that is new to you, you can ask, may I use the restroom? More casually, can I go to the bathroom? To be very polite, you could say, may I go to the bathroom? The next phrase is, I would like to order something. You can use this at a restaurant probably, or in any situation where you need to place an order. I'd like a pizza. I'd like a beer. Can I get the check, please? This will be used at a restaurant. When you've finished your meal and it's time to go, can I get the check, please? In a very, very casual situation, you can just say, check, please, that's fine. The next phrase is, see you soon. See you soon is used with friends and family members, perhaps, uh, when you expect to see them again soon after saying goodbye to them. This is used at the end of the conversation. You're going separate directions. You say, see you soon. See ya is also good, or just see you. To make it a little more formal, you can say, I'll see you again soon. Make a full sentence out of it that way. The next phrase is see you later. See you later is very similar to see you soon, but the point is with see you later is that you're probably going to meet that person again later on in the same day. The last phrase is really. Really is a very useful word because you can use it to show you are interested in a conversation with upward intonation. Really, really, tell me more. Or to show that you're not so interested in the conversation with downward intonation, really. So there are many other words that you can use similar to really in this way, like seriously or oh, oh, and so on. So it's a really good practice for your intonation. Uh, so those are 25 very common words uh, and phrases in English. If you liked this video, if you like this topic, um, please subscribe. Um, I'm sure there'll be a button here somewhere or a button here or wherever. Um, but please be sure to subscribe to our channel because we're gonna be doing more videos like this and we already have more videos like this. So please be sure to check them out. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Really? Oh, interesting. Uh-huh. Okay, I see. Great. Fantastic. Unbelievable. Mm, gratitude <laughs> subjects. What are we having for dinner tonight? Pizza? Affirmative. I'll riff on that. I am Chris Hardwick. A man is reporting about his company's sales performance at a meeting. Which two charts is he using for his presentation? Please look at the handout. The left chart shows our company's sales over the past three years and the sales forecast for the current year and the right chart shows the monthly breakdown in sales up to October of this year. Now, please have a look at the left chart. It shows that sales have been steadily increasing over the past three years. And if we can keep increasing our sales, the total sales for this year will show an increase over last year. Next, please look at the right chart. The right chart shows that the campaigns we ran in April and August were fairly effective. I see, but the sales decreased in May and September following the campaigns. Yes, but this kind of decrease is unavoidable. I expect the annual sales for this year will show an increase over last year if we can keep increasing our sales. Which two charts is he using for his presentation? A man is reporting about his company's sales performance at a meeting. Which two charts is he using for his presentation? Please look at the handout. The left chart shows our company's sales over the past three years and the sales forecast for the current year. And the right chart shows the monthly breakdown in sales up to October of this year. Now, please have a look at the left chart. It shows that sales have been steadily increasing over the past three years. And if we can keep increasing our sales, the total sales for this year will show an increase over last year. Next, please look at the right chart. The right chart shows that the campaigns we ran in April and August were fairly effective. I see, 
but the sales decreased in May and September following the campaigns. Yes, but this kind of decrease is unavoidable. I expect the annual sales for this year will show an increase over last year if we can keep increasing our sales. A man is joining a sports club and getting information on its policies. What type of membership will he choose? Let me start by explaining our club's different membership options, as described in this brochure. Regular members can use the gym and the pool at any time on any day of the week, but we also offer early morning memberships where people can use the facilities only in the early morning, and night memberships for people who only want to come in the evening. What are the hours for early morning members? Early morning members can use the facilities from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m., and night members can use them from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. I see. So early morning members can stop by and use the facilities on their way to work. Exactly. The early morning type is popular among people with 9 to 5 jobs, and we also offer memberships just for the gym or just for the pool, if you only want to use one of those. I want to use both, the gym and the pool. I think I'll use the gym in the early morning before going to work on weekdays and then use the pool on the weekend. Do you have a membership that covers something like early mornings for the weekdays but all day on the weekend? We're sorry, but we don't offer a membership like that, sir. Okay, I don't think I can get up that early on the weekend, so I'll choose this membership option. What type of membership will he choose? A man is joining a sports club and getting information on its policies. What type of membership will he choose? Let me start by explaining our club's different membership options, as described in this brochure. Regular members can use the gym and the pool at any time on any day of the week, but we also offer early morning memberships where people can use the facilities only in the early morning, and night memberships for people who only want to come in the evening. What are the hours for early morning members? Early morning members can use the facilities from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m., and night members can use them from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. I see. So early morning members can stop by and use the facilities on their way to work. Exactly. The early morning type is popular among people with 9 to 5 jobs, and we also offer memberships just for the gym or just for the pool, if you only want to use one of those. I want to use both, the gym and the pool. I think I'll use the gym in the early morning before going to work on weekdays and then use the pool on the weekend. Do you have a membership that covers something like early mornings for the weekdays but all day on the weekend? We're sorry, but we don't offer a membership like that, sir. Okay, I don't think I can get up that early on the weekend, so I'll choose this membership option. A woman is talking with a man who works for an outsourced printing company about a brochure for a new product. When is the deadline for the first design draft for the brochure? We decided to launch the new product on October 15th, and we'd like to offer you the contract to make the brochure. Thank you so much. We're definitely excited about helping you with this project. So, could you tell us a bit about the schedule? When will you need everything by? Well, considering the time needed for printing, we'd like to get the brochures to the printing stage by the end of September. So, would it be possible for you to get us the first design draft by the middle of August? Well, we'd like to give you three design options for the initial draft, and then have you choose the one which best fits your concept. Then we'll make the final design based on your choice, so it'll be very helpful if you could give us two more weeks to prepare for this stage. Hmm, okay. Maybe one month will be enough time to choose one of the designs you've made and then decide on the final design. All right, we'll be counting on you. You're in good hands. Our design team is the best. Thank you so much. When is the deadline for the first design draft for the brochure? A woman is talking with a man who works for an outsourced printing company about a brochure for a new product. When is the deadline for the first design draft for the brochure? We decided to launch the new product on October 15th, and we'd like to offer you the contract to make the brochure. Thank you so much. We're definitely excited about helping you with this project. So, could you tell us a bit about the schedule? When will you need everything by? Well, considering the time needed for printing, we'd like to get the brochures to the printing stage by the end of September. So would it be possible for you to get us the first design draft by the middle of August? 
Well, we'd like to give you three design options for the initial draft and then have you choose the one which best fits your concept. Then we'll make the final design based on your choice. So it'll be very helpful if you could give us two more weeks to prepare for this stage. Hmm. Okay. Maybe one month will be enough time to choose one of the designs you've made and then decide on the final design. All right. We'll be counting on you. You're in good hands. Our design team is the best. Thank you so much. A woman is calling on the phone to reserve tickets for a play. Which two seats did she get? Hello. This is Blackfriars Playhouse. Can I help you? I'd like to get two tickets for King Lear at 5.30 this evening. Do you still have any tickets available? We do have a few seats left, but I'm sorry to say we don't have any next to each other. If you don't mind, though, we can get you two seats separately. Okay, we don't mind. Do you have any particular requests? Well, do you have any aisle seats? Yes, we have an aisle seat at the left side of the center section. And to the right of it, three seats over, we have another free seat. To the side? Okay, then please book that aisle seat. Certainly. How about the other one? Do you have any seats near the center? The only center seats we have left are from the first row to the third row. I'm not too crazy about having actors spit on me, so... This room is relatively small, and I think you could enjoy the play even at the end of the row on the side. Is that so? Then I'll take the one you mentioned before on the left side. Which two seats did she get? A woman is calling on the phone to reserve tickets for a play. Which two seats did she get? Hello, this is Blackfriars Playhouse. Can I help you? I'd like to get two tickets for King Lear at 5.30 this evening. Do you still have any tickets available? We do have a few seats left, but I'm sorry to say we don't have any next to each other. If you don't mind, though, we can get you two seats separately. Okay, we don't mind. Do you have any particular requests? Well, do you have any aisle seats? Yes, we have an aisle seat at the left side of the center section. And to the right of it, three seats over, we have another free seat. To the side? Okay, then please book that aisle seat. Certainly. How about the other one? Do you have any seats near the center? The only center seats we have left are from the first row to the third row. I'm not too crazy about having actors spit on me, so... This room is relatively small, and I think you could enjoy the play even at the end of the row on the side. Is that so? Then I'll take the one you mentioned before on the left side. A man and a woman are talking about preparations for a presentation they'll be making tomorrow at their office. What will the woman check after the conversation ends? Okay, I think we're almost ready for the presentation tomorrow. Just a few more things. The meeting will start at 9 sharp, so could you double-check the meeting room today? Yep, I've already checked the room. Okay, great. Did you make sure the projector's working okay? Oh, I was going to check the projector tomorrow morning when I have my laptop. No, we've got to get that checked today. We won't have time to deal with it in the morning if there's a problem. So, make sure to check that projector today. That's the most important thing, okay? Will do. And did you get the copies of those handouts? Ms. Tanaka is making them now. Let's see. What else? Oh, did you check the whiteboard? Yes, I did. Sometimes the pens don't have enough ink left in them. Did you get a chance to check them? Not yet, but I'll make sure to do that later. Yes, please make sure to do that today. What will the woman check after the conversation ends? A man and a woman are talking about preparations for a presentation they'll be making tomorrow at their office. What will the woman check after the conversation ends? Okay, I think we're almost ready for the presentation tomorrow. Just a few more things. The meeting will start at 9 sharp, so could you double-check the meeting room today? Yep, I've already checked the room. Okay, great. Did you make sure the projector's working okay? Oh, I was going to check the projector tomorrow morning when I have my laptop. No, we've got to get that checked today. We won't have time to deal with it in the morning if there's a problem. So, make sure to check that projector today. That's the most important thing, okay? Will do. And did you get the copies of those handouts? Ms. Tanaka is making them now. Let's see. What else? Oh, did you check the whiteboard? Yes, I did. 
Sometimes the pens don't have enough ink left in them. Did you get a chance to check them? Not yet, but I'll make sure to do that later. Yes, please make sure to do that today. Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. Hi, everybody. My name is Alicia, and today we're going to be talking about 10 of the hardest words to pronounce, according to you guys. So we collected some information from you on Facebook. Thanks very much for sending in your ideas. And these are the top 10 uh, most difficult words for you to pronounce. So let's get started. Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely might be tough to pronounce. Absolutely means 100%. Absolutely is uh, an agreement phrase. Are you going to that music event next week? Absolutely. Yes, 100%. Definitely. Absolutely. Loot. Like a loot. L-U-T-E. Begrime. Begrime apparently means dirty. I have never heard nor used this word before, but perhaps it's difficult to pronounce. Begrime. The door to my apartment was begrimed in the storm last week. Breakfast. The next word is breakfast. Breakfast is hard to pronounce, but that is the meaning of breakfast. You're breaking the fast. So a fast is a period of time without eating, and to break means to, to well, in this case, breaking something. It doesn't refer to, like, crushing a thing, but um, stopping something, to break the fast of the night, in other words. So you're fasting during the night, you're not eating, so you wake up in the morning, you break the fast. But we don't say break fast, we say breakfast. In a sentence, this morning for breakfast I ate a bowl of cereal with grapes, and I had a coffee too. Colleague, colleague, yes, colleague. Many of my students struggle with this. They say colleague, or they say colleague you, or something, because the spelling of this word is really, really strange. There's that G-U-E at the end. Or more commonly, I feel, it's just coworker. Uh, colleague sounds slightly more formal to me than coworker. Somebody who you work with, or somebody who you have a business relationship with in some sense. Could be a person from another company, could be somebody from your own company. Anyone who you do business dealings with is your colleague, can be your colleague. In a sentence, I'm going to a networking event with my colleagues next week. Miscellaneous, that M-I-S-C, miscellaneous, it's just a, the spelling, I think, maybe is confusing for this word, miscellaneous. Miscellaneous just means other stuff or just other uncategorized stuff. I keep a lot of miscellaneous items in a, a drawer in my house. Maybe they don't, they don't really fit into one category, like it's not kitchen things, it's not clothing. It's just sort of a mixture of, of things, miscellaneous things. Negotiation. The next word is negotiation. Negotiation. Yeah, there are two T's in this, but neither T is a hard T. They're both very soft, that sh, sh sound, because they're followed by the I and another vowel, the she, a negotiation. Negotiation refers to a compromise uh, between two people. You're trying to make a decision and you negotiate. In this case, this is a noun form, negotiation. Business negotiations continued for more than a month with this important deal. Realm. Realm. I see why this one's hard. It's that realm part. The realm. It's a weird word, isn't it? It's used to talk about just like the kind of a fantasy world is sort of the nuance of this phrase, the realm. Uh, in a sentence, let us go to the realm where the elves live and eat their bread. Unfortunately. The next word is unfortunately, unfortunately, unfortunately. It just means too bad. Uh, you can use this to, to start bad news, for example. Like, unfortunately, I can't come to work today because I'm sick. Or, unfortunately, I broke my arm at the basketball game last week. Or, unfortunately, my haircut is bad. Vocabulary. 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 Vocab vo vocabulary. 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 <laughs> vocabulary. Vocabulary just refers to the uh, words in a language. My vocabulary in my second language is really, really low. I need a bigger vocabulary so that I can express myself more clearly. World. World. Ah, oh, I see why this one's hard. World. World. Hard to pronounce. That R L D. I think t uh, together is tough. Plus that W at the beginning as well. It's such a short word, but you have to say so many weird things at the same time. World. Your tongue is going blah, blah, like this. In a sentence. I have traveled all over the world and the best food is in my stomach. That's the end. So those were 10 hard to pronounce words. 
give them a try slowly at first and just kind of try to work up to saying it at a more natural speed if you like. Thank you so much for sharing your opinions with us on Facebook uh, and please make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on any of this fun information. So thanks again for watching today and we'll see you again next time. Bye! You don't need new shoes, you need new feet. A man and a woman are choosing a hotel. Which hotel are they going to choose? We have to decide on the hotel for our trip next month. Okay, let's check the internet. The Ocean Hotel is near the beach. It says $120 a night per person, and you get a buffet breakfast. How about the Pine Hotel? It's $80 a night. I don't want to waste too much on accommodations. Hmm, but the Pine Hotel is far from the beach and from downtown, and it says you have to pay for Wi-Fi. What about the Sunrise Hotel? It usually costs $140 a night, but now they're running a promotion and we can stay one night for $90. It's between the beach and downtown. Plus, it has free Wi-Fi. Sounds good. Oh, wait. It says the deal is for next week only. Oh, I didn't see that. So how about this place, the Royal Hotel? It's located in the middle of downtown and it costs $100 a night. The room doesn't look so nice, but they have free Wi-Fi. Okay, let's book this hotel. Oh, it's already fully booked. Shoot. Then I think the first one is best. Is it full? No, it's not. Great. Which hotel are they going to choose? A man and a woman are choosing a hotel. Which hotel are they going to choose? We have to decide on the hotel for our trip next month. Okay, let's check the internet. The Ocean Hotel is near the beach. It says $120 a night per person, and you get a buffet breakfast. How about the Pine Hotel? It's $80 a night. I don't want to waste too much on accommodations. Hmm, but the Pine Hotel is far from the beach and from downtown, and it says you have to pay for Wi-Fi. What about the Sunrise Hotel? It usually costs $140 a night, but now they're running a promotion, and we can stay one night for $90. It's between the beach and downtown. Plus, it has free Wi-Fi. Sounds good. Oh, wait. It says the deal is for next week only. Oh, I didn't see that. So, how about this place, the Royal Hotel? It's located in the middle of downtown, and it costs $100 a night. The room doesn't look so nice, but they have free Wi-Fi. Okay, let's book this hotel. Oh, it's already fully booked. Shoot. Then I think the first one is best. Is it full? No, it's not. Great. A man and a woman are talking about the layout of a meeting room. How are they going to arrange the tables? Let's move the tables for tomorrow's meeting. All right. Shall we put all the tables in the center of the room so that everyone faces each other? Well, there's going to be a group session first, so let's separate the tables into four sections. Four people will be seated in each group. Okay. And I'll put some pens and pads of paper on each table. Thank you. And we'll have a short presentation at the beginning of the session, so we need a projector here. All right. Also, we're going to use a whiteboard, aren't we? Is it okay if I put the whiteboard next to the screen? Well, how about putting the whiteboard at the other end of the room? That makes sense. After the meeting, we need to put everything back where it was, in four rows of two tables per row. How are they going to arrange the tables? A man and a woman are talking about the layout of a meeting room. How are they going to arrange the tables? Let's move the tables for tomorrow's meeting. All right. Shall we put all the tables in the center of the room so that everyone faces each other? Well, there's going to be a group session first, so let's separate the tables into four sections. Four people will be seated in each group. Okay. And I'll put some pens and pads of paper on each table. Thank you. And we'll have a short presentation at the beginning of the session, so we need a projector here. All right. Also, we're going to use a whiteboard, aren't we? Is it okay if I put the whiteboard next to the screen? Well, how about putting the whiteboard at the other end of the room? That makes sense. After the meeting, we need to put everything back where it was, in four rows of two tables per row. A man and a woman are talking about office supplies. 
What will the man order? Every month you need to check our office supplies and order any items that are running low. This time, let's take a look at them together. Here's the checklist. Okay, that sounds good. Well, starting with the paper, it looks like there's only one box left. We use lots of paper every day, so let's order two more boxes. Okay, the printer is out of color ink. Should we order that? We don't really print documents in color, so we don't need to worry about that. Hmm, okay. Looks like these whiteboard markers are running out of ink. Right. Those need to be replaced. We get a discount if we order them in sets of five, so let's do that. Okay. And while we're at it, can we order a mouse? Sometimes it works, but sometimes it doesn't. That's probably because it's running out of batteries. Let's check the stock of batteries and order more if we don't have many left. Sure. Well, we have three batteries here. You can take two of these for your mouse, but buy a six-pack of batteries to replace them. What will the man order? A man and a woman are talking about office supplies. What will the man order? Every month you need to check our office supplies and order any items that are running low. This time, let's take a look at them together. Here's the checklist. Okay, that sounds good. Well, starting with the paper, it looks like there's only one box left. We use lots of paper every day, so let's order two more boxes. Okay, the printer is out of color ink. Should we order that? We don't really print documents in color, so we don't need to worry about that. Hmm, okay. Looks like these whiteboard markers are running out of ink. Right. Those need to be replaced. We get a discount if we order them in sets of five, so let's do that. Okay. And while we're at it, can we order a mouse? Sometimes it works, but sometimes it doesn't. That's probably because it's running out of batteries. Let's check the stock of batteries and order more if we don't have many left. Sure. Well, we have three batteries here. You can take two of these for your mouse, but buy a six-pack of batteries to replace them. A woman is asking for directions to the airport at an information center. How is she going to get to the airport? Excuse me, I need to go to the airport. Would you tell me how to get there? Sure, there are a few ways. If you take bus number one, it takes about one and a half hours to the airport. It's the least expensive way. Bus number two is a non-stop bus. It's more expensive and leaves once every hour, but it only takes 50 minutes. I see. What about taxis? There's a taxi stand in front of the building, and they take about an hour. But they use the expressway and charge extra for a lot of luggage, so it's going to be a lot more expensive than the bus. I guess that makes sense, and I'd like to avoid paying too much. You didn't by chance buy anything at Shopping World while you were here. They offer complimentary shuttle service to the airport for customers who make a purchase there. Wow, I didn't know that. I haven't bought anything yet, but I was going to stop by and get some souvenirs there anyway. Then you can use that. How is she going to get to the airport? A woman is asking for directions to the airport at an information center. How is she going to get to the airport? Excuse me, I need to go to the airport. Would you tell me how to get there? Sure, there are a few ways. If you take bus number one, it takes about one and a half hours to the airport. It's the least expensive way. Bus number two is a non-stop bus. It's more expensive and leaves once every hour, but it only takes 50 minutes. I see. What about taxis? There's a taxi stand in front of the building, and they take about an hour. But they use the expressway and charge extra for a lot of luggage, so it's going to be a lot more expensive than the bus. I guess that makes sense, and I'd like to avoid paying too much. You didn't by chance buy anything at Shopping World while you were here. They offer complimentary shuttle service to the airport for customers who make a purchase there. Wow, I didn't know that. I haven't bought anything yet, but I was going to stop by and get some souvenirs there anyway. Then you can use that. A woman and a supplier are talking on the phone. What is the woman going to get for the sale? I need you to deliver some more sweaters in time for the sale next month. Okay, what do you need? We need a thousand of the small red sweaters and 400 of the medium red sweaters. 
And we also need 600 of the small green sweaters and 200 of the medium green sweaters by the end of this month. Red and green sweaters. Actually, we're running low on green sweaters and we're waiting on some green yarn from our supplier. We'll get you started with the red sweaters, though. No, no, no. We need the red and green sweaters together. So please just get as many green sweaters ready as you can. Okay. I think we can get 200 of the green sweaters to you on time. Which size has higher priority? The small ones take priority. Sorry for such short notice, but we really need your help. All right. We'll do our best. We'll get those green sweaters to you along with all the red sweaters you ordered. What is the woman going to get for the sale? A woman and a supplier are talking on the phone. What is the woman going to get for the sale? I need you to deliver some more sweaters in time for the sale next month. Okay, what do you need? We need a thousand of the small red sweaters and 400 of the medium red sweaters. And we also need 600 of the small green sweaters and 200 of the medium green sweaters by the end of this month. Red and green sweaters. Actually, we're running low on green sweaters and we're waiting on some green yarn from our supplier. We'll get you started with the red sweaters, though. No, no, no. We need the red and green sweaters together. So please just get as many green sweaters ready as you can. Okay. I think we can get 200 of the green sweaters to you on time. Which size has higher priority? The small ones take priority. Sorry for such short notice, but we really need your help. All right. We'll do our best. We'll get those green sweaters to you along with all the red sweaters you ordered. Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. Oh, do, 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 do. Hi, everybody. My name is Alicia, and today we're going to be talking about 10 phrases that you always want to hear. So let's begin. You win. The first phrase is you win, you win. If you hear the phrase you win, it means you have won something. You are probably going to receive something for free. Woo! That's a very happy thing, right? You want to get free things. Congratulations, you win a car. Yay! Here are the keys to your new car. Great, thank you. I brought you something special. This is exciting to hear because it means this little something special is like, oh, I thought only of you, so I brought you this. I brought you something special. Really? Thank you. Mm. I miss you. I miss you. I miss you is nice. You can use this with your friends, your family members, your partner, whoever. I miss you shows that you want to meet the other person. Probably you haven't, you haven't seen them as much as you would like to, so you can say, I miss you, I miss you. Call your husband or wife or boyfriend, girlfriend, whoever on the phone, maybe. You haven't seen them for a long time. You can say, I miss you. I miss you too. Take a break. I'll do the cleaning today. Take a break. I'll do the cleaning today. This means someone else is going to clean up your house for you or clean up something for you. I would be very happy to hear this phrase right now because my apartment is a disaster because I'm only there to sleep. <laughs> so maybe you've had a long day at work or a long day doing something. You come home and somebody else has offered to do this for you. So take a break. I'll do the cleaning today. And you can reply, really? Thank you so much. I'm going to relax. The budget is unlimited. The next phrase that you always want to hear is the budget is unlimited. The budget is unlimited. This could be at work. This could be a budget, a personal budget, maybe. But it just means there's no limit to the budget. You can spend as much money as you want. Woohoo! Very exciting. So let's see. In a business context, perhaps you have this new client who's going to give you a lot of money to build a new house or something. Maybe you're building houses. That's your project. Your boss comes to you. The budget for this project is unlimited. Really? Let's go crazy. Dun, dun, dun. There'll be a bonus at the end of the month. Yeah, this is a phrase that you probably are very excited to hear. It means you are going to receive extra money from your job at the end of the month. Woohoo! Very exciting, extra money. Maybe you'll hear this from your boss or your manager or maybe your coworker at work. Or maybe you see it in an email. There'll be a bonus at the end of the month. Really? I'm going to use mine to buy a new car. Really? I'm going to use mine to go out on a date. Really? I'm going to use mine to get a new... Fish, you did a great job. 
you did a great job. You did a great job is something um, you'll probably hear from, well, I don't know, you could hear this from pretty much anybody. Anytime you've done a good job, someone will congratulate you or tell you their opinion with this phrase. You did a great job. You finished a project at work and your boss says, you did a great job. Nice. Thank you so much. It was really fun. Or thank you. Just, just say thank you. You look great today. You look great today. The other person thinks that your physical appearance is nice today. <laughs> Don't think about the today part, you know. Just, just, just take the compliment. Be like, oh, really? Thank you so much. You look great today. Oh, thank you so much. I got a new haircut. Thank you so much. I, I got enough sleep. Yeah. You were right. You were right. This means that um, something that you said in the past was correct. And it, everybody likes to be correct, I think. I saw that movie that you recommended. You were right. It was really good. Oh, good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Don't be like, I know. Or, yeah, I knew I was right. Don't do that. Just say, oh, good. I'm glad. You're an excellent cook. You're an excellent cook. This is a nice compliment, especially for someone who enjoys cooking. If you say, you're an excellent cook, it means you enjoyed their food. So, let's see. At a dinner party, for example, you're an excellent cook. This food is delicious. Oh, thank you so much. I'm really glad you enjoyed it. And that's the end. So those are things that you want to hear. So keep in mind, it's nice for you to hear these things, but other people also want to hear them too. So compliment other people. Tell them that they are awesome if they are awesome. Tell them that they have good skills in whatever it is that they like to do. People like to be complimented. People want to be liked. So write them a message or say something nice to them. Yes, leave us a comment. We have a great team of people doing all these amazing things. So tell them how much you love them. So thanks so much for joining us for this week's lesson. We will see you again next time. Please make sure to subscribe if you have not already uh, so that you don't miss out on any fun stuff. Thank you very much again for watching and we'll see you again soon. Bye. <laughs> I guess I don't really need to do that. <gasps> I'm so sorry. Amped all the time. Japanese bug battle. A husband and a wife are looking at some floor plans. Which room are they going to see? How about this one? It's got a nice large living room. Hmm. I like a big living room, but I want the parking space. Let's see. How about this one? Yeah, that's nice. Should we go see this one? Wait a second. Isn't the closet a bit too small? Good point. Hmm, there doesn't seem to be one that's perfect. Wait, how about this one? It's got everything we need, doesn't it? And the closet is pretty large, too. Let's go see this one. Okay. Which room are they going to see? A husband and a wife are looking at some floor plans. Which room are they going to see? How about this one? It's got a nice large living room. Hmm. I like a big living room, but I want the parking space. Let's see. How about this one? Yeah, that's nice. Should we go see this one? Wait a second. Isn't the closet a bit too small? Good point. Hmm. There doesn't seem to be one that's perfect. Wait. How about this one? It's got everything we need, doesn't it? And the closet is pretty large, too. Let's go see this one. Okay. A man is making a reservation at a hotel. Which room is he going to stay in? Seaside Hotel, how may I help you? Hi. I'd like to stay for one night on September 22nd. Certainly. One night from September 22nd. How many people? Two. Would you like a smoking or a non-smoking room, sir? Non-smoking. The only non-smoking room available on that day is a mountain view room. Is that okay? Well, I was hoping for an ocean view room. I'm sorry, but the only ocean view room available on that day is a smoking room. I see. Is there a non-smoking ocean view room available on September 23rd? Yes, there is. Okay, we'll stay on September 23rd. Which room is he going to stay in? A man is making a reservation at a hotel. Which room is he going to stay in? Seaside Hotel, how may I help you? 
Hi. I'd like to stay for one night on September 22nd. Certainly. One night from September 22nd. How many people? Two. Would you like a smoking or a non smoking room, sir? Non smoking. The only non smoking room available on that day is a mountain view room. Is that okay? Well, I was hoping for an ocean view room. I'm sorry, but the only ocean view room available on that day is a smoking room. I see. Is there a non smoking ocean view room available on September 23rd? Yes, there is. Okay, we'll stay on September 23rd. A woman is talking to her hairstylist. How would she like to change her hair? Hi, may I help you? Hi, I've got a three o'clock reservation for Richie. Ah, yes, welcome, Miss Richie. Please come this way. What can I do for you today? I'd like to change my hairstyle a little bit. Okay, what length would you like? About shoulder length. All right, and what about your bangs? Keep the bangs. Straight down or parted on the side? To the side a bit. Which side? Maybe a little left from the middle? Got it. We'll start with the shampoo, so please come this way. How would she like to change her hair? A woman is talking to her hairstylist. How would she like to change her hair? Hi, may I help you? Hi, I've got a three o'clock reservation for Richie. Ah, yes, welcome, Miss Richie. Please come this way. What can I do for you today? I'd like to change my hairstyle a little bit. Okay, what length would you like? About shoulder length. All right, and what about your bangs? Keep the bangs. Straight down or parted on the side? To the side a bit. Which side? Maybe a little left from the middle? Got it. We'll start with the shampoo, so please come this way. A male and female student are looking at job advertisements. Which job is the female student going to apply for? Hey, what do you think about this job? The hourly pay is pretty high. Sure, the pay looks great, but could you really do a newspaper delivery route? Of course. I'm good at riding bikes, but I'm worried about waking up early. What about this one? The pay isn't as high, but you can work two or three days a week and start working from the evening. Oh, this one? A supermarket cashier, huh? Well, it would be good to work after school. This one for a coffee shop might be good too. Oh, yeah, I love that place, and it's on my way to school. Not bad, huh? Hmm, which one should I apply to? Which two is it between? The coffee shop and the newspaper delivery route? Yeah, the pay for the newspaper route is really nice. Okay, my mind's made up. I guess I'll just have to get up early. Which job is the female student going to apply for? A male and female student are looking at job advertisements. Which job is the female student going to apply for? Hey, what do you think about this job? The hourly pay is pretty high. Sure, the pay looks great, but could you really do a newspaper delivery route? Of course. I'm good at riding bikes, but I'm worried about waking up early. What about this one? The pay isn't as high, but you can work two or three days a week and start working from the evening. Oh, this one? A supermarket cashier, huh? Well, it would be good to work after school. This one for a coffee shop might be good too. Oh, yeah, I love that place, and it's on my way to school. Not bad, huh? Hmm, which one should I apply to? Which two is it between? The coffee shop and the newspaper delivery route? Yeah, the pay for the newspaper route is really nice. Okay, my mind's made up. I guess I'll just have to get up early. A woman is trying on a dress and talking to a shop clerk. Which dress is she going to buy? It looks very nice on you, and it fits perfectly. Yeah, it fits, but I usually wear plain colors. I'm not used to this kind of a pattern. Well, I think you look great. Yeah? Still, it would take some courage for me to actually wear this.
What about this dress then? The pattern is much more reserved, so it won't feel as flashy. You're right. Let me try that one on. Go right ahead. What do you think, ma'am? This one suits me much more than the last. Do you have a long sleeved version with this design? Yes, we do. Thanks. I'll buy that. Which dress is she going to buy? A woman is trying on a dress and talking to a shop clerk. Which dress is she going to buy? It looks very nice on you, and it fits perfectly. Yeah, it fits, but I usually wear plain colors. I'm not used to this kind of a pattern. Well, I think you look great. Yeah? Still, it would take some courage for me to actually wear this. What about this dress then? The pattern is much more reserved, so it won't feel as flashy. You're right. Let me try that one on. Go right ahead. What do you think, ma'am? This one suits me much more than the last. Do you have a long sleeved version with this design? Yes, we do. Thanks. I'll buy that. A woman is ordering a birthday cake. Which cake is she going to order? Excuse me. I'd like to order a birthday cake for my daughter. Great. Could you tell me what kind of cake you're looking for? My daughter likes chocolate, so I think a chocolate cream cake would be good. And can you put strawberries on it? Absolutely. We have round and square cakes. Which one would you prefer? Hmm. A round one, please. Okay. How old is your daughter going to be? She'll be 12. Okay. Then we'll get 12 candles ready. Do you want to write a message? Yes. Please write, Happy Birthday. All right. Do you want that written in pink? If so, we'll put it on a white plate. Otherwise, we can write it in white and put it on a pink plate. Please write it in pink and put it on a white plate. Which cake is she going to order? A woman is ordering a birthday cake. Which cake is she going to order? Excuse me, I'd like to order a birthday cake for my daughter. Great. Could you tell me what kind of cake you're looking for? My daughter likes chocolate, so I think a chocolate cream cake would be good. And can you put strawberries on it? Absolutely. We have round and square cakes. Which one would you prefer? Hmm. A round one, please. Okay. How old is your daughter going to be? She'll be 12. Okay, then we'll get 12 candles ready. Do you want to write a message? Yes. Please write, Happy Birthday. All right. Do you want that written in pink? If so, we'll put it on a white plate. Otherwise, we can write it in white and put it on a pink plate. Please write it in pink and put it on a white plate. A man and a woman are discussing plans for their upcoming move. When are they going to move? I think we should decide on the moving date and call a moving company. Sounds good. I was just looking at some moving companies. I don't want to pay a lot of money. Definitely. This company here will give us a discount of 10% if we book at least one month before the moving day. One month before? Then we have to move after December 15th in order to get the discount. Yep, and there's an additional discount if we book on a weekday. A weekday? Well, I have a meeting that Monday morning, and the exhibition is on Tuesday and Wednesday, so... Friday would be good because we could then organize the new place over the weekend. Yeah, but wait a second. They say 15% off Monday to Thursday and 5% off on Friday. Well, what do you want to do? Let's go for the biggest discount. I'll be done with the exhibition by then anyway. When are they going to move? A man and a woman are discussing plans for their upcoming move. When are they going to move? I think we should decide on the moving date and call a moving company. Sounds good. I was just looking at some moving companies. I don't want to pay a lot of money. Definitely. This company here will give us a discount of 10% if we book at least one month before the moving day. One month before? 
then we have to move after December 15th in order to get the discount. Yep, and there's an additional discount if we book on a weekday. A weekday? Well, I have a meeting that Monday morning, and the exhibition is on Tuesday and Wednesday, so... Friday would be good because we could then organize the new place over the weekend. Yeah, but wait a second. They say 15% off Monday to Thursday and 5% off on Friday. Well, what do you want to do? Let's go for the biggest discount. I'll be done with the exhibition by then anyway. Hi everybody and welcome back to Top Words. My name is Alicia and today we're going to talk about 10 words for talking about sleep. Let's go. To wake up. The first word is to wake up. To wake up is to open your eyes, probably in your bed or the place where you are sleeping. To wake up is to, uh, to become conscious, to become awake. <laughs> Every day you wake up, uh, presumably, hopefully. In a sentence, I woke up three times last night. To get up, to get out of bed. All right, the next word is to get up or to get out of bed. So that means to physically move your body from your bed out of bed, to stand up from your bed, to get out of your bed. We say to get up or to get out of bed. In a sentence, I got up at eight o'clock this morning. To snooze. The next word is to snooze. So we have to snooze an alarm and also to snooze. So to snooze means to take a short sleep, to have a short sleeping time. Or to snooze an alarm is uh, when your alarm goes off in the morning, you have a button. Most alarm clocks have some button you can press so the alarm will turn on again in like you know, five or ten minutes or something. So to snooze an alarm is to, like, to ask your alarm to wake you up again a few minutes later. That's uh, to snooze. So we have to snooze an alarm and to snooze, meaning like a short, light sleep. In a sentence, I always snooze my alarm at least once. That is usually true. <laughs> to oversleep. The next word is to oversleep. To oversleep means to sleep too much or to sleep late. Uh, actually, no, it doesn't mean to sleep late. Uh, to sleep late means just to sleep until a late time in the day. Uh, oversleep means sleeping beyond the time you wanted to get up. So, for example, if my alarm is set for 8 o'clock, but I wake up at 9 o'clock, I overslept. I slept beyond my wake-up time. So we can use oversleep to talk about times when you sleep too much. You sleep uh, more than your body needs you to. So maybe your body needs, depending on the person, like six to nine hours or so. But if you sleep like 14 hours, we can say that's oversleeping. You're sleeping too much. Mm. That's the nuance here. In a sentence, I overslept on my first day of work. Nap. The next word is nap. Nap is a short sleep. So a nap is maybe 30 minutes, one hour, just a short sleep, a short rest. So a lot of people will take a nap in the afternoon, for example, or maybe children actually take naps, for example, in preschool or when they're very, very young. They have a, an afternoon nap, a short sleep, like, yeah, just a, like an hour or so, I imagine. In a sentence, I love naps. Actually, I do like naps. I don't like naps because when I take a nap, it becomes a sleep. It's always like I wake up four hours later and I'm like, well, okay, well, I've destroyed my sleep schedule. Dream. The next word is dream. Dream. So dreams are those, those visions, those images you see, those ex maybe experiences it seems like you have when you are asleep. In a sentence, I always have weird dreams. Nightmare. So the next word is nightmare. Nightmare is a word which means bad dream or scary dream, negative dream. So uh, children maybe have nightmares a lot. They wake up crying or they're really upset by nightmares, monsters, uh, terrifying things happening and so on. In a sentence, do you ever have nightmares? To go to bed. The next word is to go to bed. So before we talked about to get up or to get out of bed, this is the opposite. To go to bed means to get in your bed, uh, to, to try to go to sleep. 
to go to bed. In a sentence, I usually go to bed fairly late. To hit the hay, to hit the sack. The next expression is kind of a, I don't know, a slang expression. Uh, we have to hit the hay and to hit the sack. These both mean to go to bed. Um, they both mean to try to fall asleep, but we just use them in more casual situations. The image here of hit the hay is with your body hitting hay, like laying down in hay. Uh, I believe historically because uh, hay was used to stuff um, things that people slept on. Um, so that's why we have this expression to hit the hay with your body. Same thing for to hit the sack. So a sack full of something soft to sleep on uh, is where this expression comes from. In a sentence, I think I'm going to hit the hay to fall asleep. The next expression, it is to fall asleep. To fall asleep, you're in bed and you finally, you lose consciousness. You, you stop being aware. You are asleep. In that moment, we say you fall asleep. In a sentence, it takes me a long time to fall asleep. All right. Hi everyone, I'm Christine from EnglishClass101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about 10 phrases to help you in an emergency. Let's begin! Help! Use this phrase when you need help or when you want someone to rescue you. In case of an emergency, dial 911. In the United States, the phone number you can dial in case of an emergency is 911. For police, also dial 911. The number is the same for calling the police. It's easy to remember. Call the police, please. Use this phrase when you need someone to call the police. Please state the nature of your emergency. This is what the 911 call center or an officer will say to ask for more details about your emergency. I need a doctor. Use this phrase when you are not feeling very well and want to get medical help. I need an ambulance. Use this phrase when you need an ambulance to come and take you to the hospital. There's a fire! This is a very simple way to catch people's attention in case of a fire. After saying this, you need to explain what happened and where the fire is. I want to report a crime. Use this phrase when you want to report a crime that has happened to you or someone else. My location is... When you call for help through the phone, you'll need to say where you are. Start your explanation with this phrase. Hi everyone, it's Christine. Welcome back to another episode of Top Words. Today, we'll be talking about 10 reasons to start learning a language. Let's go! It's a beautiful language. Every language has specific characteristics and some people like the way certain languages sound. Some languages might sound better to you than others. My family comes from a place where the language is spoken. For many people, their cultural heritage is very important to them. If your family speaks another language, you might not be able to talk to some of your relatives or fully understand your background. So many people try to learn the language of the place they've descended from. I love the culture and the people who speak the language. If you're really interested in a specific country and its culture, this can be a great reason to learn a language. It's also shown that being interested in a culture motivates language learners to work harder and get better results. I just love learning languages. Some people learn because they have to, and some people just learn because they find it interesting. Learning a language takes time and effort, and some people love the challenge. The language is useful for my job. Gaining new skills is important for many professionals. Being able to speak another language can potentially help your business make more money and maybe even get you a promotion. I live in a country that speaks the language. Living in a country and not being able to speak the language can be hard. Learning the language of the place you live can help you make friends, get a job, and have an easier life. I want to open my mind and become more international. For many people, feeling connected to other cultures and broadening their horizons is especially important. Learning a new language can change how you interact with the world. I want to understand my favorite songs, movies, and TV shows. If you're really into a culture, learning that culture's language can help you enjoy it even more. Learning a new language can add depth to your appreciation of a culture. I love traveling. 
People who have been bitten by the travel bug, but traveling to a place where you don't know the language can be hard. For example, if you can speak Spanish, there are so many different countries you can visit. It's part of my university studies. Most universities require you to take language class for a few semesters to graduate, but it doesn't have to feel like work. Learning a language for university can open great opportunities in the future. Vamos! Hi everybody! Welcome back to Top Words. My name is Alicia and today we're going to be talking about 10 gamer speak words. I am excited about this one. Let's go. First word is achievement. Achievement is used when you have completed a mission. In some games, there's a very famous phrase that says like, achievement unlocked. Good feeling. Beta. Beta. It's for something that's not quite finished, but that's maybe in like a testing phase. You could hear like the beta release of something or like the beta test version of blah, blah, blah. For example, I am beta testing a running game right now. That is true. Next is boss. If you've ever played a video game, probably you know about a boss battle. You've been playing through a level, and at the end of that level, there's a boss that you have to fight. It's kind of interesting now thinking about it, how we use boss for the main challenger that you have to defeat in a video game level, but we also use it for like our managers at work. So um, the next word is role-playing game. Role-playing game is commonly abbreviated, commonly shortened to RPG. This is a very popular style of game, a role-playing game, meaning you play a role. Role-playing games have evolved over years. Now you can play, for example, MMORPGs, massively multiplayer online role-playing game. I have been playing role-playing games since I was like 11 and my brother convinced me to play Final Fantasy VII. The next word is checkpoint. You might also hear save point. You save your game and then you continue on in the game and then if you die, you go back and you respawn. You come back to life from that checkpoint. I feel like checkpoint is used more in like a racing game, but save point is used more in an RPG. The next one is noob, N-O-O-B. I love the word noob. Mostly to talk about myself actually when I've made like a really stupid decision. Noob means rookie. It means someone who is inexperienced at something. You can use noob in a game if you find someone who has just joined the game. They're a brand new player. They are a noob. They don't know anything. Farming. Let's talk about farming. In gaming terms, it means you are trying to collect a certain item. It has like kind of a reputation for being a bit boring because you're just killing like the same creature over and over again. NPC, NPC means non-playable character. There are other characters within the game that move the story forward, but that you cannot play as. You cannot become that character, but you interact with them. I have to talk to an NPC in order to move this quest forward. Next is camper. A camper is someone who is waiting for a creature to spawn. So a person who's waiting for the monster to appear is called a camper. You can use camping as a verb too to talk about that. Like I'm camping this monster. Really? People camp other players? I suppose so, depending on the kind of game you're playing. MMO is a massively multiplayer online game. It means you can play online with a lot of different people, essentially. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.